say how excited are you to get things underway finally? We're looking forward to it. You know, it's been a long spring and summer of training and working out. Our guys are ready to face a different competition. How do you think this team is different than the team we saw last season? Definitely a different team. Uh, you know, nine new players. Uh, they all bring a little something different with their skill set. I think we'll see a team that, you know, I think we'll, we'll maneuver the basketball a little bit more, uh, space the floor a little bit better than we did. We shot it well last year, but I think this year's team will space the floor a little bit better. I think our inside presence of multiple guys are able to play down there also gives a little more depth on the interior as well. The defense is still the focus, obviously. Definitely, definitely. We spent a lot of time this, this offseason working on our defense, and, and to their credit, you know, all the guys have really bought into that. You know, they bought into kind of our culture and what we want, and that's what you want to see. Uh, the young guys have been great with that. Still a lot to learn, but the older players that, that transferred in, they really embraced that culture of, of how you have to win on the defensive side of the ball, and I like the energy and the effort. The training camp overall, were you able to get accomplished everything that you wanted to get done leading into the opener? Well, I don't think you ever really do, uh, in large part because a number of our kids came or young men came, you know, late. They didn't come at the beginning of the summer because some of them didn't graduate and uh, didn't start their grad year until the end of August. So about three or four of our players didn't get here until almost September. So they didn't have a summer to really get themselves adjusted. But, but to their credit, they've worked hard. I think they played some good catch up. They, they're catching up quick. They understand what we want, and uh, I think we're, we're in a good position. I think you're never going to be perfect, but we're in a good position. How much are you motivated, your staff and, and your team, to make one final mark in the American before you move on? Uh, definitely motivated. Uh, the America's been great to us. You know, we've had some success in the conference. Uh, we like to, to go out that way, and uh, we like to leave we leave the conference in a way that that we leave our mark. And the only way you can do that is to win and, and to win big. So, so we're excited about the challenges ahead of us. It's a great league, of course. A lot, a lot of competition, a lot of depth in the league, and uh, you know we're preparing for that. What do you still not know about your team that you need to see them in at game action? Well, there's still a lot of you know unknowns because the guys haven't really played. But I do like their spirit. I like the fact that they come with some experience. A number of the guys have transferred in, but we have to see them under the lights. You know, when we actually throw it up, you know, and face other competition, then we'll learn more about our guys. But right now, in practice and the practice environment, they've been very competitive. They really bought into what we want to do to be successful, and, and that's what I've liked about it. That acclimation process, bringing new guys in, transfers and whatnot. Obviously, it's part of the new world of college athletics, even more so. How difficult or easy is it? Is, is, is the fact that you have good leadership, does that help you out too in terms of ingratiating those guys? Definitely. I think, you know, all of our guys that remain, which is pretty much four players, were very welcoming of the new players, which is good. You know, a lot of our new you know, players that have remained didn't have a lot of experience themselves. I mean, C.J. Walker did, of course. Darius Johnson started probably half the season. And other than that, didn't have a lot of experience with the, with the remaining players. But, but what they did do is they were great teammates and ingratiated themselves with our guys that, that came in. And I think that's what you want to see. And uh, I think the team camaraderie, uh, us, us working together, and team building and team bonding exercises that we've done, I think we're good for our guys and everyone bought into that. What is CJ's status? Uh, CJ's status is, you know, he's still in the process of returning. Uh, he, he doesn't, of course, he's not cleared as of yet. But uh, with the injury that he sustained, is not something that should keep him out very long. I expect him to be going, you know, early in the season for us, uh, based on what happened. And uh, he's working towards that. And he looks good. He uh, hadn't had any setbacks. Do you have a few bullet points, things you really want to see on Monday night? Uh, the main thing I want to always see is is how hard we come out and play. You know, I'm always a big believer in you know, the team that plays the hardest plays most together is the team that has the best chance of winning. So I just want to see us go out there and lay it all out there on the floor. I don't want to see any of our players pacing themselves. When you see us play this year. I want you to see us play like a wave of guys going out there competing, all playing as one. What improvements do you want to see from Darius in his play, and also what kind of leadership skills do you want to see from him? Well, he still has to continue to grow as a leader. He's only a, a sophomore, so he's growing in that role, you know, and that's that's a good thing for him. He has the ball in his hands. I want to see him continue to make his teammates better by facilitating the basketball. You know, he's a very unselfish player. I want to see him continue to do that. But I don't want to lose his ability to score the ball in that. I think he's a capable scorer. I want to make sure he maintains that balance. And that's that can be difficult. I'm asking you to lead, I'm asking you to score, and I'm asking you to facilitate. But uh, I think I think his shoulders are big enough to handle that. He's talented enough. And uh, if he continues to, to take the steps he's took this offseason, he's only going to get better. 
I know it's a one game at a time mentality, but when you look at the schedule, you got a lot of home games early. You got Miami, Florida State, schools that you've had good success against in recent years. Moving forward, how important is it to try and keep those those in-state rivalries going? You know, I think it's very important. We have a great state, a lot of terrific basketball teams, and so the more we can play each other, I think it's better for all of us. I think it helps us when we go outside of our conference and we go into our respective conferences. It's going to continue to help us. So I think it's a good thing. Uh, hopefully we can continue to do that. There's been some discussion this offseason about potentially expanding the NCAA tournament. Uh, what are your thoughts on that, reactions? I mean, obviously 64 and 68 is a lot, but... There's been some discussions about wanting to expand it potentially in the future. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm of the I'm of the latter. I think I, I do think that it should be expanded. Uh, just when you think about the tournament, I mean, you're talking about 64 teams, you know, relatively, and you're talking about there's 370 Division One basketball teams. I look at every sport around this country, and I look at professional football. Half the teams are going to go to the playoffs. I look at NBA basketball. More than half the teams are going to go to the NBA playoffs. And I look at you know, our sport, and probably 10, 15% are going to go to the NCAA tournament, which is our marquee event, which we celebrate our sport, and yet we don't take as many teams as, as we possibly could take. I mean, think about it like this. You know, you have, when I was playing, I believe it was 32 teams that were going. And people said when we went to 48, it was going to get worse. All the tournaments, what's going to happen to the NCAA tournament? It got better. Then I'm playing in my last year, we go from 48, I believe, to 64. Oh, this is going to be horrible. It's the worst. What are we doing to the tournament? It's gotten better. So I don't see how it's going to get worse, adding one more game and making it 128 even. If that's the number, I don't know what the magical number would be. But I, I know it should be more than 64. I mean, that's just obvious, I would think, in this sport. And like I said, the places I played, if it was only 16 teams, we would have still been in it. So I'm not saying coming from a selfish place. I'm coming from a place of it's our biggest celebration and our sport for all these young men and women. And all the things we're talking about them having and getting, I think they, I think more kids would like that experience. I would think they want to be a part of that. To say when they graduate and they leave the game, that they can say I was a part of our biggest celebration. With the move to the Big 12, how's the conversation changing in terms of recruiting? Uh, well, of course, I mean, going to the Big 12, I think it's been a great opportunity for us to continue to grow our brand. Uh, I think we continue to help enhance their brand as well. UCF is an amazing place. Uh, I think when we go around the country and we're recruiting, of course, now that we're in you know, a quote-unquote power five you know, potential situation where you know, people are listening more. They, they, they're, they're more open to hearing what you have to say because you know, everyone wants to you know, play in that caliber of conference. You know, I was one of those players, so I understand where these young people are coming from. We have a chance to play at that level. You know, it's something that you aspire to do. And so I understand that from young young people. Fortunately, we've been able to recruit young people that have had an opportunity to go to those places but just wanted to really play for us and loved our relationship. So they've come to us anyway. But I think it just affords us more opportunity to recruit, recruit more young men because of the uh, moniker of being able to say we're going to a power, you know, power five conference now. The, the practice court here, we noticed it on media day, the Big 12 logo is already on it. Uh, the thought process behind that? Uh, well, for me, the, the thought process of, you know, as people are, you know, reshaping and retooling and finding opportunities to, to redo your floor, that's just something that happened. But I mean, that's the last thing on my mind, as you know, and, and on my players' mind. You know, we're, we're locked in to what we have to do in the American Conference. That's where we are. We're excited to be in the conference. We're excited for the season. It's going to be a great league, a lot of terrific coaches and players. And that's our only focus. I'm not looking one step past any game that we're playing this year or the American Conference game because that's the most important. I'm an easy person. I, I like to stay in the moment. In the moment, we're in the American, and we want to make the best showing we possibly can here. What impact do you hope Taylor Hendricks brings to your team this season? You know, I hope he brings you know a lot of energy. Uh, I think his versatility will show. I mean, he can play multiple positions. Uh, he can score inside. He can score outside. So I just want to see him go out there, be aggressive, and just and just you know be who he is. I don't want him to go out there and try to be somebody, another player. Just be the best version of Taylor he can be out there. Let us coach him. Let us continue to push him to maximize his potential. And I just want him to play free. You mentioned transfers earlier. Talk about them. Ithiel, for example, what does he bring to your team? 
it feels, it feels a score for us, you know. What I want to see him do is I want to see him be aggressive offensively. I want to see him, you know, look at the score of the basketball. He can shoot, he can put the ball on the floor. And I want him to concentrate on doing those things that he does well. And what about your other transfers? Uh, we have a young man, C.J. Kelly. C.J. Kelly's another young man. He can shoot the basketball, he can put it on the floor, he can make plays for others, he can facilitate, he can lead. You know, so I'm excited about what he brings to us as well. Uh, you know, Lahat, you know, a transfer for us coming in at 6'10". You know, just very, very active, you know, around the paint, just finishes around the basket well. One of the most mobile big men I've ever really coached. He can get up and down the floor, he can, he can guard. You know, so excited about what I'll see him do. Uh, Michael Durr, you know, you guys remember him from my conference. Uh, last year played at Indiana. I think he brings up stability at, at the post position, of course, as well. Another guy who can score inside. Another guy can step outside and make a 15 or 17 foot jumper. And, uh, you know, does a great job as a teammate as well. Um, you know, those are a few of the guys that I think have really kind of stood out this, this offseason. Jalen, a young guard we have, a, you know, point guard. He's done a really good job of developing this summer. I think he's going to, you know, impact what we do. He's going to play the point and score. He also can pass the basketball. Excited about what I've seen him do also this, uh, this offseason as well. You know, the NCAA tournament a few years ago. How hungry are you, because you're obviously a huge competitor, to get back there and to show everyone that this, you know, get into the NCAA tournament, that can be an annual goal for UCF. You know, I'm a big believer in that. You know, I'm very hungry, and so is my team. You know, we have a lot to prove, and we're excited about getting out there and showing what we're capable of accomplishing. And that's the ultimate goal for us. You know, we want to have always have a vision of, you know, playing in the postseason, playing for championships. You know, we think we're capable of doing it here at UCF, and uh, that's what we're going to continue to attempt to do. Coach, what are some things that you did last season that you feel like you could do better this season? Well, I thought I thought defensively we weren't as, as strong as we had normally been defensively. I didn't think our guys uh, and us, we got to do a better job just overall defensively. Uh, offensively, I didn't think we connected as well on the offensive end. We really worked on that this year with spacing and playing off each other a little bit better. I think we had guys that we could really go to and they were really good scorers, but I think that led to us being more dependent on those guys as opposed to depending on what we do with our system. So I think this team is a more system-oriented group. They're playing off each other better, and uh, that's what we really concentrated on. Who's your starting five? <laughs> Wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> that's why I asked. <laughs> I'm going to keep that under wraps. Right? We're still in the process of determining that. <laughs> How about that? What can you tell us about Monday's opponent, the opener? Uh, with UNC Asheville, very good basketball team, returning a lot of players. Uh, they had a good year last year, and I'm, I'm sure they're expecting big things this year. Uh, you know, they have good size, good strength, a lot of really good shooters. Guys can really knock, knock shots down the perimeter, including their bigs. Uh, they like to press and get after it defensively, so that's going to be a, a high-intensity game where they're going to press and, you know, and try to disrupt you and speed you up. And so, no, a very good team. Like I said, the main thing is they have a lot of returning players, so they didn't lose much scoring or rebounding or anything. So uh, they're a team that I'm sure expected to finish in the top two or three in their league this year. You excited about home opener, opening season? Really am. I'm really looking forward to it. I mean, great opportunity for us to get in front of our fans and our crowd, our students. And uh, that's what it's about, you know, seeing our community come out. And uh, we're excited to go out and perform for them. Your son, Aubrey, is playing in the G League 19. Looks like he was making some shots and re rebounds and having success this season playing against one of the number one, potentially number one draft pick uh, next year. What, just how proud are you of him to continue playing and playing at a high level? You know, I'm, I'm very proud of him. I'm proud of him because he's doing what he loves to do. Uh, I hope he plays it for as long as he possibly can. He's enjoying the experience now with the G League at 19. The last two years he played overseas, which was, you know, in, in, in Germany and in Turkey. So. You know, he's having a great experience. He's seeing the world. He's, he's continuing to play a game that he loves to play. And he's very good. He's talented, as you saw in those games. I mean, he can be as successful on any level. And uh, I'm just happy for him and rooting for him. Good.